Let's get serious. First of all, it's not a joke. It's very serious. Christmas, Christmas album. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. We just want to send this out to my man right now. Let me. How do you pronounce your name? Tupac. Tupac. Mm -hmm. Remember, like two, like two, and Pac, like pocket. You won't go wrong. Just Tupac. What's your best Christmas memory? Um, let me see. When I thought we didn't get any gifts for Christmas, I was in Baltimore. We didn't get, I thought we didn't get nothing. It was a knock on the door. My sister's principal from her school came, and they had like this charity, whatever, where they give like the turkey to the poor family on the block. We was the poor family. So we got this turkey, I got some cheap boots, you know, got a little cheap trinkets. But on Christmas, you want as many trinkets as possible. And so I got a whole bunch of little tiny things. It was cool. We got free cheese, free beans, free butter, free everything. All that little government surplus stuff. But on Christmas, you needed, I mean, as opposed to us having an empty refrigerator, empty nothing. So I just remember when it first came, you know, and it's always like a Christmas carol playing around Christmas time on somebody's TV. And I just remember that first feeling, like really feeling like, you know, dang, this is Christmas. You know, this is like the give, give thing. <laughs> the give, give thing. That's when I used to feel the sorriest for my mother. It's because there was no man there, you know, and this is a woman, my mother. She had to tell us, you know, Mary. she had to make it like Mary, and there was nothing there. There was no, there wasn't even regular dinner, let alone Christmas dinner, you know. And she had to, like, explain to us how, like, I mean, it's so hard to sell that all we need is each other's speech, especially when your stomach hurts, you know. And she's telling us that as our stomachs are going, <laughs> she's going, all we need is each other. It's me. <laughs> But I thought it was just so beautiful how she just would be strong and she would do it. And she would never use that time to go, your fathers are really jerks, you know, they really left me here. But they did. Our fathers really did leave her. And, and my, my, I mean, our fathers, like my, my father and my sister's father, different fathers, but they really did leave us. And, you know, they didn't call on Christmas to help my mother explain why the hell we ain't getting no gifts. They was just like, you know, with they woman, wherever they was, being big shoddy, being Santa Claus to somebody else's kids. And so... I mean, no love taken from my father, God rest his soul, but, I mean, whew. I mean, I, I got it. He better not expect nothing big on Christmas. Tell me about some of the special things that someone growing up in the inner city and in your situation or, uh, deals with. Okay. Man, it's like, mm, that's deep. It's like, when you're born, usually, you're born to a dynasty or an empire, right? You're born, like, as a junior or, you know, following in your father's footsteps. You always tell oh, your, your father, he did this, or oh, your father, oh, your grandfather, he did this, or we got this, or the family heirlooms. There's none of that in, in the outer city. I call it the outer city because we left out. There's no nothing. We don't get any family heirloom, the family crest, all that stuff that you would think is so important was meaningless. Because we, we, I mean, come on. Our family crest was cotton. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, it's like the only thing we can really leave behind is culture, is music, you know? And, and, and dignity and determination. That's what we had. So it's like, I feel as though I'm cheated because instead of me fulfilling my prophecy, I have to start one. Instead of me, you know, doing a good job and carrying on the empire, I have to build one. And that's, that's a hell of a job for a 21-year-old. You know what I'm saying? That's a hell of a job for any youngster, male or female, to have to build an empire for your family. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, especially when the odds is that, you know, you, have, you know that somebody else who lives in the inner city, the real inner city, suburbia, who, when he's born, I mean, 16, he gets a car, automatic. You know, there's money in the bank for college. You know, it's Christmases, go to vacation somewhere. Our vacations was down the street, cross town, grandma house. You know what I'm saying? That was the vacation. Or, you know, or jail. 
to be even more real. And I hate to make this like sad story, but it's real. Because this world is such a, um, and when I say this world, I mean it. I don't mean in an ideal sense. I mean in uh, every day, every little thing you do. It's such a, gimme, gimme, gimme. Everybody back off. You know, everybody's like, you taught that from school, everywhere. Big business, you want to be successful? You want to be like Trump? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Push, 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 push. Step, step, step. Crush, crush, crush. That's how it all is. And it's like, nobody ever stopped. Just, you know, I feel like, instead of us just being like, slavery's bad, slavery's down. Bad whitey, bad whitey. I mean, all right, let's stop that. And everybody's smart enough to know that, I mean, we've been slighted. And we want ours. And I don't mean by, like, uh, ours, 40 acres and a mule, because we're past that. But we need help. I mean, for us to be on our own two feet, us meaning youth or us meaning black people, whatever you want to take it for, for us to be on our own two feet, we do need help. Because we have been here. We have been a good friend. If you want to make it a relationship type thing, we have been there, and now we deserve our payback. It's like you got a friend that you don't never look out for. You know, you dressed up in jewels. Now America's got jewels, and they got they paid and everything, and they lending money to everybody except us. And it's like, you know, everybody need a little help on, on their way to being, you know, self-reliant. I mean, if this is truly a melting pot in the country where we care about it and Lady Liberty got a hand like this, she really loves us, then we really need to be like that. And it needs to be the black kids. And if there's a, a white person who got money, then you need to help them. He need to help black kids, Mexican kids, Korean kids, whatever. But it needs to be real. And it needs to be before we all die and then you say, oh, I made a mistake. We should have gave them some money. We really should have helped these folks. It's going to be too late. You know what I'm saying? And then that's when you got to pay your own karma. And that's when God make you punish. When you, God punishes you. Because I feel like, you know, it's too much money here. I mean, nobody should be hitting Lotto for 36 million and we got people starving in the streets. That is not idealistic. That's just real. That is just stupid. There's no way Michael Jackson should have, or whoever Jackson, should have a million thousand, drupal billion dollars and then there's people starving. There's no way. There's no way. That these people should own planes and their people don't have houses, apartments, shacks, drawers, pants. I know you're rich. I know you got $40 billion, but can you just keep it to one house? You only need one house. And if you only got two kids, can you just keep it to two rooms? I mean, why well, have 52 rooms and you notice somebody with no room? It just don't make sense to me. It don't. And then these people celebrate Christmas. They got big trees, huge trees, all the little trimmings. Everybody got gifts, and there's somebody starving. And they're having a white Christmas. They're having a great Christmas, eggnog and the whole nine. That's not fair to me. I think that there's, when there's hopelessness, people revolt. Because it's like there's nothing that's like, you know, it's like we're going, is America going to help us ever? You know, because, I mean, we know for a long time they haven't. Are they ever? And it's like all these things are showing us no. And there's the, you know there's somebody going, no, they're not going to help you. No, they're not going to help you. And then, of course, we see it. No, they're not helping us. All BS aside, it all comes down to we got to survive. I mean, even warriors put their spears down on Sundays. We got to survive here in this country. Because I'm not going back to Africa. We got to survive here. And for us to survive here, white folks, black folks, Korean folks, Mexican folks, Puerto Ricans, we got to understand each other. We got to take, take a bigger chance. And when I say Americans, people think I'm talking about Uncle Sam. I mean, like, actually Uncle Sam with the gray hair and the flag. I mean, you. 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 The guy, you know, you. The mechanic, wherever. You. I mean, you need to do something. You need to check yourself and see how racist you are. You know what I'm saying? 